This is part 3 in a 9 part series about repairing a crashed Suzuki GSX-R750. Stay tuned for what is in the box and then the removal of the damaged front fairing. The new fairing had arrived and I was eager to get started. In this video I'm going to show you what you get with the new fairing and I'm going to show you how you take the old fairing off. I now have all the parts that I need to make a start on putting the GSX-R back on the road. The big thing that I've been waiting for is this here, which is a brand new fairing from China. And it's finally arrived, and I don't normally do an unboxing video, but I thought you might be interested in just what you get. The fairing kit came from the 12K Motor Group, which is based in Sydney, Australia. The fairing kits they sell, however, are manufactured in China. The box was well taped up and the total weight is about 12 kilograms or a bit over 26 pounds. Inside all the painted parts are enclosed in foam wrap. On the painted parts, all of the lettering decals are covered in tape, which I assume is an extra layer of protection against damage, as these are cut decals. All of the painted parts are blemish free and clear coated as well. The inner wind spoiler panels or air dam parts come in plastic bags which I'm fine with as they are necessary but relatively unseen part of the fairing assembly. The kit also contains a complete set of fasteners for the fairing including all the various screws, clips and panel pins. I did like the use of recycled cardboard boxes as additional packing material. Just wish I could read Chinese. Overall, the paintwork was beautiful, not one blemish to be seen. You can personalise the fairing kit within reason. This one came with a smoke tinted windscreen and had no mention of the engine size on the tailpiece. This leaves other riders guessing as to whether it's a 600, 750 or 1000cc variant of the GSX-R. So nice. So it all comes as a complete package. Mudguard. Headlight cowl. Windscreen, the two fairing sides, the tail piece, and the internal wind spoilers. If you're wondering what this silver stuff is, it's actually heat protection. It goes on the inside of the uh, fairing to prevent the engine heat buckling or bubbling the fairing. There's no seat and there's no pillion seat cover. In here we will be reusing the existing seat and the existing pillion seat cover. Before I could fit the new fairing, I needed to get the old one off. 
I started by removing the outer screws. I then discovered that the bottom join of the two lower fairing halves was held together by bolts instead of panel pins. This bike is about 20 years old, probably had a few owners over the years, so you expect some changes. Bolts are a bit more secure than panel pins, but way more difficult and time consuming to remove. It was at this stage that I thought I should have gone for an hourly rate instead of a set price for this job. Finally, I removed the three inside screws that hold part of the air dam against the panel and disconnected the indicator wires and the lower fairing panel was off. working on these sort of bikes for quite a while but I don't necessarily know where all the screws go and there are different screws as you go around this uh, fairing bottom. So this is a trick I've been following for years and uh, what I do is I have a piece of cardboard just like this and it's very easy to just punch the screws through and I will go through and put my screws basically in, the, in a uh, position that approximates where they go on the bike. So um, take it off, don't know where these screws go exactly, I don't want to have a mix and match episode for half a day when I go to put it back together. It is as you can see the screws on the fairing, that's how I set it up. So I've finished setting up the piece of cardboard, it reflects the fairing shape, shows you where each screw sits in a, a schematic. It's not uh, to scale, it doesn't need to be to scale. And on the back I put the three screws that come in from the back. Then it was on to undoing the right hand side. You can see now that the bike was on the lift table, not on the floor when the left side was removed. For this video I have put together the complete removal of the front fairing components as one, but I actually did it in two parts initially removing the left side lower panel so that I could fully assess the damage to the alternator after which I fitted the replacement cover. It was many many weeks later when I removed the remaining fairing components as I had to wait for the new fairing to arrive first. With the lower fairing halves removed it was on to the headlight cowling First I had to remove what is the upper part of the air dam which is fastened to the bottom of the headlight cowling. There are four panel clips holding it in place. With the air dam out of the way I move to the top of the unit where there are three screws holding it to the fairing frame. Two of which hold the mirror on, in the case of the right hand side, and the remains of the mirror mount in the case of the left hand side. Then it was a simple matter of pulling the cowling forward and disconnecting the wiring harsh cables and the cowling was off. 
I've just breezed through the removal of the damaged fairing and it may not be clear as to exactly how it all comes apart or how it will all go back together. Now, when you've got a damaged bike, it doesn't really matter how it comes off because you may have broken parts which are difficult to get off. I like to start at the bottom if the panels are good and I'm going to show you how you do this for if the panels are good. You've got three panel clips, one, two, three, that hold the, the bottom halves of the fairing together. They're also locating dogs, which engage between the panels. So essentially there's locating dogs here and here, and there are panel pins that should be in these three positions. When you have panel clips, there are two basic types. There's this one here, which just has a, a center pin, and to undo it, you just push in the center pin, and it will pull out. To reinsert it, you push that pin all the way down, reinsert it, and then push it to there, and that locks it in place. The other style you'll see looks like a Phillips head screw, and that's exactly what it is, you put your Phillips head screwdriver in, you screw that in, that expands the other side to hold the panel in place, and you obviously undo it, and sometimes they lock up, so you just put a little pry tool under there and just reef it out. On the lower part of the fairing, and I'm going to call these components an air dam, what they're really about is controlling the airflow into the radiator. There will be clips down here, but this bottom one is held on by two screws on the outside, located here and here. You need to undo those, and then above it is another another part of the air dam. There are dogs that locate it uh, within the uh, fairing lower and it clips into those dogs and then there are three screws which are on the inside that you need to undo. There is a panel clip up here which connects to the next section. I always take it out you don't have to, you could just undo the two screws and prise it apart and leave it all in place. It just depends what you're doing. If you're just taking the panel off uh, to maybe service the radiator, that's maybe all you have to do. It just depends. We talk about the headlight cowling. It has another component of the air dam which sits underneath. There will be four panel pins that hold it in place. There will be two panel pins up here that connect to this section here. You could leave it in place in the theory that it will pull forward, but there's a good reason to take it off. You will have, apart from the air dam for the radiator, you have two air intakes for the air box and it's always good to be able to get at everything to sort of give it that extra bit of pressure to pull it apart. The other thing is this comes apart with the headlight and the instruments in place and there are two cables that run to the right hand side that need to be disconnected and it will make it a lot easier for disconnection. Now removing the headlight cowling there are three screws at the top that need to be undone. One, two, three. These two are actually hold your mirror on. So you need to take your mirror off before you can uh, pull the headlight cowling off. Same on the other side, another three. The headlight itself has lugs at the back that lock into the fairing frame. And when you go to take it off, you do a direct pull forward and that will pull those two lugs out of their rubbers. Sometimes the rubbers come with them.
You will also need then to disconnect the cables. It's good to have somebody to hold the headlight cowling while you do that. Or I just balance it on my knee. With the front fairing all removed, I was ready to move on. But before I got to fitting the new fairing, I wanted to take advantage of the, the naked front end, so to speak, to fit the new levers, handlebar grips, bar end weights and air intakes. And that's what I'm going to cover in the next episode. Of course, the best way to know that the new episode has been posted is to subscribe to the channel. It's easy, just hit the subscribe bar down below. While you're there, ding the bell so you'll get a notification from YouTube as soon as the next episode or any other new episodes on the White Dog Garage YouTube channel are posted. Thank you for watching and I look forward to talking to you on the next video.